Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast. This is a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take on various topics that tend to cross one's path. When you go on this endeavor of communicating with images, we think hard about this stuff. So you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Hi, I am Rob Stensinger. I'm a user experience designer, interactive storyteller, and a teaching artist. Hey, he's a teaching artist too. I'm, I'm a cartoonist, teaching artist, and uh, festival administrator. I guess I should start saying that too. Festival director. Festival director. That's the title. That's the proper title. Um, good to see you, Rob. Um, here we are at the end of October, about to dive into November. Oh my goodness, we've got to do Art Sound Off soon. <laughs> Uh, are you ready? I'm not. <laughs> honestly, I I've I am well, I mean, could I do something? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh but but trying to like that's a that's a good thing that we've uh we've been meaning to follow up on and mm -hmm. and to discuss well, behind the scenes and publicly uh just what's the next evolution of of art sound off. Yeah. And uh and you know, we've worked on uh, working on a concept, but it's, uh, you know, it's not, not, uh, it's all the way there in that we could just wing it. We have, we've got so many mechanisms we can choose to combine in interesting ways. So I'm not worried about that, but, um, but my current, uh, I don't know, my current productivity level, my current, you know, resources and all that stuff. <laughs> I, 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 like I uh I what's really funny is uh it's been on my to do to do list to use my own workbook about art sound off. Mm. That's where where the the workbook that I created for um the customizing your next creative challenge workshop or you know class what have you it's it's like a half hour ish right so um online seminar whatever what have you but it's um yeah, to just to just sort of walk through like me and to you know tuning this for me, and then then try to understand like like does this show utility for other folks too? And um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? How are you doing for art sound off? Well, uh, very similar. I'll I'll figure it out. I we've done this enough times, and you uh, nudged us toward a direction where I feel like I have a lot to say, um, but organizing that that thinking into into like chunking it out so that I'm not uh scrambling the last couple of weeks to go like what am I going to talk about this week you know even then I figure I feel like I could do it but um but yes a, a little bit of pre-planning in terms of like okay let's just have a brainstorm session to like barf out everything I think I could talk about about this so I have an easy grab bag to refer to will prepare me for success for it but um you know this idea of teaching artist edition um, and, and I would, my hack that I want to put it to, put towards it is teaching artists slash presenting slash getting in front of your work, so, uh, kind of edition. So yes, leading on teaching, <laughs> but pointing out how doing that also prepares you for just representing your work, right? Um, having a presence in places and like how being able to, uh, connect with and, and network with other people so what why, why are you chuckling oh the the title you were were you were thinking about thinking through there the yeah. it's uh it just was really long like the kind of thing i think of yeah that's true that's, that's, that was a very, like, that's a super long title that, that's next week's you know, episode rob a uh, very rob title three three thirty three teaching artist edition slash getting in front of work slash helping slash teaching slash helping slash good <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what yeah exactly i mean if if uh you know product uh detail pages on any e-commerce site have taught us anything um i mean they've taught us how to give a title right yeah so <laughs> we've got that going for us oh man all right you ready to dig into it so this week uh we're not going to talk about art sound off we're going to talk about like tools that have like sort of won a celebrated place in our uh in our chest our our what would you call it your belt your peg our hook hearts. board our hearts yes and new candidates and and part of the reason i was thinking about this is and this is when i was like leading in with this idea of like we're at the end of october 
starting to think about like, okay, well, holidays, a lot of us like to give gifts to the other people in our lives. And a lot of us uh, know a lot of other creative people. So it'd also be worth about talking about t- tool picks in terms of sparking imagination for uh, giving creative gifts to people, right? Um, whether th- this is more like the stuff that we use to make things, not actually like making a gift, but like, you know, it's like every year I'm, I'm, I'm browsing through all of my art websites, uh, art supply websites like Blick and like uh, uh, Jet Pens going like, okay, what's a neat thing I could get Anne to like just help her optimize one more thing about her drawing, right? Or what's a cute thing? What's, what's a cute little tchotchke that will like be a cool pen holder that I can look at this year, you know? Um, so it, it, that was another reason I wanted to talk with you about it. Cause I'm like, I'm sure in talking with Rob, I'm going to get more ideas. So it's always selfish with me. <laughs> that is why we're here. You think hard about this stuff so we can pile it up like loot and take it home. Yes, and swim through it like a very rich old duck. Okay, so how about I play some music to get us to the next part of the show, the 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 main body of the show. Oh, it's the 1970s again. Um <laughs> So that the noise indicates that we're in the proper uh, main body of the episode. So, hey, Rob, what what do you, do you want to start with? Some things that you, uh, your reliable favorites list. Yeah, that sounds really good, and uh, yeah, with some context along the way too. Uh, we're not a catalog, right? right? I suppose if we're a catalog, we have some some interactivity and stuff along the way. But um, why not pick? Uh, uh, I'm going to pick. Oh, I need to wake this thing up. Let's start out with a combination of the uh, the Galaxy Tab, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6. So um, I respect Samsung's. I mentioned this um, on last week's episode, uh, and I'm just logging into it right now. And it um, let me let me go ahead and switch to it. Um, iPad. I wonder if I could. How about this one? Uh, and then I can go do this magic. Okay. So, okay. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 is a very recent um, tablet by Samsung that is, I mean, it's essentially an iPad Pro competitor, maybe the smaller iPad Pro competitor, um, because it has, uh, it has a, um, like, uh, pressure sensitive uh, drawing ability built in. It has um, a fair amount of you know power and capability, and it's got the the Android flavor and stuff com- you know compared to the the Apple universe. Uh, so so getting to files and all that stuff is is you know it's it's different, and and the available apps are different too. One exception that I think I'm going to just point to because this is old reliables, right? So uh, we've talked a lot about how um, the you know clip studio paint is a um you know it's a it's a tool that that we've we've studied but we've been t- talking about it for a long time and it's it's been in our um our repertoire for doing you know paying work for a, a number of years now mm-hmm. so clip studio paint is available on android if you're in the samsung universe right really so yeah it's a newish thing huh. so it makes it's a big deal because this is one of the killer apps to um let's see let's go ahead yeah of course i want to proceed and uh you know it's it's full featured clip studio paint on an and in the android universe oh my goodness in in you know using galaxy yeah so and the price point of the android universe I mean, I, I weighed out scenarios when I was, you know, exploring options and, and I really considered, uh, even like trying to be timely and, and jump on a sale because new iPads are coming out and all this kind of stuff. Um, this was many hundreds of dollars cheaper than, uh, than even the lowest end iPad pro. This is the galaxy um, tab S six. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, Correct. So I'm looking right it's, now, and it's like 519 bucks, like for the 128 gig storage. Holy yeah. moly! 
Holy and I, I got the 256 one on sale for um, five, no, 549. Wow. Um, so timings, everything and all that. But um, it's an incredibly capable tablet for, um, for uh, honestly, the only thing I really can't do on this is develop apps. Not really. I can work through obviously the, the conceptual phases and managing projects and all that stuff through a variety of tools. And, um, but I have to mention the, the combo of this tablet that's very capable, has, it has a built-in Wacom digitizer. The new pen, uh, if you want a really good review of this, um, uh, what is it, uh, Brad Colbo? Mm. Um, uh, some, I think his YouTube channel is called now Brad Cowboy. Um, I'll look real quick he, while you he talk. Has, he has a really solid review of this. Um, and one thing worth mentioning too is that Back in the day, Jersey, you and I both had these Samsung had Samsung tablets, right? Yep. And uh, pretty great drawing experience, but it was limited uh, by uh, you know you could, you'd have smaller resolutions and whatnot because it only had so much memory. Now you have enough memory to do whatever size drawing you you need, pretty much. Um, I'm sure there's a limit, but um, I would have to. I I did a huge illustration commission earlier this year, like physically huge. For this um, to do the side of an arcade cabinet, I should try to load that file in here. I mm. had, um, I haven't, uh, I haven't given that a shot. It's huge, um, <clears throat> so it's like mural sized, right? So anyway, um, that's I just, I don't know. That's you seem to be reacting to this. I mean, is that a? Um, well, I I haven't been I haven't been tracking this at all, uh, and I just I assume that uh, the Android tablet manufacturers had largely given up on competing with the iPad Pro in terms of like having pressure sensitive sensitive tablets because I thought the tabs were just like oh you could do your email and do web browsing on it and that's really what it's for, uh, but to find out that oh my gosh goodness you can get the full featured Clip Studio Paint now question is CSP on and on the Samsung tablet tablet is it ten bucks a month the way it is on the iPad. It depends on how you go about it, right? So they have the they have the different versions. And I forget there's there's Pro there's and the, EX. Yeah, Pro and EX, correct. So there you go. Um though the cheaper version is essentially twenty five bucks a year or okay. so. And I thought, okay, it's that important to me. I can do twenty five bucks a year. I mm -hmm. mean it's nice that I that my desktop versions I essentially paid like around twenty five bucks and I never have to update that license what have you but um it seems fair if you for some they have extra um if you want to go to the the most deluxe version i think it's somewhere in the seven to nine bucks a year depending on if you pay all of all at once or, or seven to nine bucks a month depending if you pay all at once or 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 you do a yearly lump payment mm, okay but, um yeah but that's a pretty killer app mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh the one that i just um I know I've shared uh, some love about um, ages ago, but it was it had a different name. It's, it was called Papyrus back yes, in the day. Yes, yeah. And I love Papyrus. And Same. it's now, what's well, super funny, that this is a subscription app now too. Oh. Um, but I tell you what, it's, it's pretty great. And the subscription was cheap enough where I thought, okay, I'm going to go for it because I can, um, I can, do any kind of drawing and erasing so like i just used my finger to do erase the screen um and it's uh let's see so it's selectable or movable so let's say i had a whole page of notes here i just wanted to move that around i can do that it's you know it's it's got that kind of infinite canvas to it so it's a pretty great app for doing like any kind of note taking, um, like if you, especially if you're into visual note taking and, you, and, and uh, doing sketching and, and like, well, um, that sketch note style of note taking, right? Mm -hmm. um, really flexible, wonderful tool for that. So, and it's, it's called Squid Notes now. Um, so welcome to Squid. <laughs> so that's uh and so i it was wonderful to find that again it was weird it's like i'm looking for all um it's like i moved away from android and i and then i then i came back to hometown and or not it's not really hometown i don't know tough to say um but like a familiar town and i'm like hey are my old friends around anymore 
<laughs> hey, check this out. I just pulled up the Squid uh, Android page, and I'm going to pull it up on screen. Because mm-hmm. I used to use this to do con- concept sketches for my comics all the time, and they asked me permission if they could use some of my sketches in their Android page, and they're still using them. So here's like some uh, Boulder and Fleet stuff I was drawing in Squid ages ago uh, when it was oh, called Papyrus. funny. So there's my endorsement. Like I, I was doing, I was doing this kind of drawing in it, just like playing around with ideas, uh, because it is, it's a very uh, responsive and uh, like intuitive note taking and doodling app. I would emphasize doodling because the last time I used it, it didn't have layers. So if you like do like under sketching and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of hard to uh, get rid of it, although there are like really cool eraser tools in the app where you can do vector erasing, uh, like object erasing or mm. um, traditional style erasing. So, and the workflow for it too is um, is very. Let's see, I can uh, switch back. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, the workflow for that is uh, um, it depends on the the stylus. Ah, I mentioned so you have you may have. I don't know if you have your old tablet laying around anymore and your old styluses, but the old styluses still work. Um, on the tab six? On the new tab, yeah. And huh. it's, yeah, it's pretty fun. And it's where it's, I've got. I forget what that kind of digitizer is called, but it's the kind that doesn't require batteries, right? That's the other nice thing about it. Yeah. It's, um, what's funny is the, the, the new pen actually has a battery in it and oh. it recharges when you. When you connect it back into the, actually, yeah, it, boop, it has a little, it can, it hangs and is magnet, magnetized to the back. Got it. And, um, and it recharges, but that's for doing sort of like um, literally hand wavy gestures to um, like, it needs some kind of active tech in there to, to, for motion detection or what have you. So oh. it's probably velocity detection and stuff like that. Hmm. But um, yeah, the old pens work. Um, I've got an old one from a gateway tablet, um, like super ancient. And, uh, and then I've got one from the, this, this interesting add on one from the, uh, that, oh, what was that thing called? The galaxy 10.1 or something like that. Yeah. The note 10.1. That was, that was the one we had before. Yeah. So then and this, this thing is funny where you actually, it inside is the real regular pen oh yeah that's like yeah okay yeah so it's a holder to hold the note 10.1 pen because yeah the 10.1 like the pen like actually slid into the body of the tablet the way the the note phones did yeah yeah it's pretty pretty fun but um a little extra i don't have the tablet anymore but i still have like a mess of those pens so that that's interesting that is to go down like to go on a similar path. Another thing I've been kind of tracking, so I haven't been tracking the Samsung tablets, but what I have been sort of like intrigued by are some of the, um, well, actually, no, this is in the next section because I don't want to get ahead of us. We're talking about like potential candidates. I, right now we're talking about like Old Faithful, right? But a bookmark that. Bookmark that for follow-up in the second half. We talk about something I've, I've been following and I haven't tried myself, but I'm really, really ex- interested in it. Not sure if I'm excited about it yet. So, um I'm watching. I'm watching it for right now with an eyebrow cocked. Okay, so one of my picks. Um, oh, good goodness. Um, this is one that I've been using for like, I want to say going on ten years now. Um, and this is the Lihit Lab bag in a bag, and and I kind of oh. talked about this on um, our everyday carry episode because this goes this goes in my bag, and I, I carry this. I have two of these. I have a big one that goes in my bigger. Like uh, I'm going to a convention bag, and then I have this small one here that I that goes with me everywhere I go. And what it is is it's just like a little sort of folio case um, that opens up like so, and you can keep you know a small sketchbook. I keep mm. my, on a on a little clipboard inside of there. Oh, zips up on either side, and then it can carry. It's got uh, some pockets on it, so I carry my watercolors with me everywhere I go. And then I've got like a little pad of watercolor paper. And then some sticky notes and um, tissue paper for like blotting things. So this is basically like my little. It's 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 uh um, how would I put it? Let me see if I can get my full video so I can see this a little bit better. It's a companion to my pen case, right? So I've got all my pens, my watercolor pens, and so on in, in this pencil case here. 
but then this carries all of the tools that I need to like break out and just draw wherever I am, right? So it's called the Lihit Lab bag in a bag, and it just slides right into the main body of my shoulder bag and keeps all my art supplies uh, organized. That but is cool. How many years have you been using that as a? I want to say going on ten years. Um, pretty oh, close wow. to that. So I, I remember it was I w maybe it's like more like eight because it was a, it was a trip to New York City. I went to uh, Kino Kino Kinuya Kino Kini. Oh, I can never pronounce it. I am such such an old Westerner, middle aged Westerner. Uh, Kino Kinuya Kinuya. It's a it's a it's a Japanese uh, sort of like manga slash. Uh, pop culture slash office supply store like that like this this glorious section of pens like if you ever want to get lost thinking about pens go there um but i got this there uh, but then you can also find them on jet pens and all of the lihit lab l i l h l i'll put up on screen so that everybody can see what it looks like um but yeah it's l i h i t lab bag so um that's pretty cool. I've I have I've used some some wonkier versions of that, and uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, looking toward the day when when travel is is a simpler situation again, uh, that kind of thing is, would be useful because I've been using uh, some inexpensive like zipper pouches, but they have this woven uh, material in there, and it reminds me of like fiberglass tape. Right? Mm. They're not great looking tools but they help um make make my bags less you know cluttery right mm -hmm. uh but they don't do great when they get scanned right something in there is messes with the scanning oh interesting. and so <clears throat> welcome to bag search repeat yeah 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 so something like uh, that's just yeah something well built that has good organization is uh yeah good to know about yeah, I I have yet to find its equal in terms of keeping my stuff where I need it to be. And like there, like I said, there's a bigger version that has a, like one more row of pockets that is, uh, you know, it has like it has one more row of little pockets for keeping things like watercolors. But then it's got two more rows of bigger pockets to keep notebooks and things in. So, um, yeah, I I I, I this is one of those things I've, I I kind of have a, like a weird obsession about where I was like I'm always looking at. My Instagram feed is nothing but like shoulder bag advertisements, <laughs> and, I, and I'm on a couple of email lists for shoulder bags, and I'm I'm always like curious about like did somebody crack the code even better? Uh, but that one hasn't been replaced yet. I've I've got m multiple shoulder bags that I use for a variety of different situations, but like those Lihit Lab bag in a bags, um, I haven't I haven't found anything that I like better than that yet. Um, so yeah, um, pitch it back to you. Hmm. Oh okay. Um. Yeah, so um, reliable favorites. Continuing that, um, what? Uh, uh, let's see. I didn't. I, let's, I'm coming to uh, realize I didn't. I don't know if I described the context enough for the for the ta the tablet, but just as uh, you know, having having a reliable tablet with good battery life and and whatnot. You know, as as the tablets age, their their ability to recharge and retain a charge is it becomes less and less and slowly but surely it's it's more of a be right next to you to your desk or an outlet and be plugged in somewhere device is you know versus being this near magic thing to <laughs> to just carry around and draw on it's so yeah. awesome to to have that ability so that was that's the situation with my my iPad Pro still in you know it's it's like a how old is that thing it's it's the first generation ipad pro so it's at least four or five years old wow and you know it's still good but a little bit you know not not performing as well with some apps and that good that battery is not so great but yeah anyway. yeah i have, I have a yeah. surface Two, a surface pro 2 which is like a slightly thicker version than the new surface pros uh but like i can't the battery doesn't work anymore, right? Like uh, even with like mm -hmm. an external battery, it just, it, it b crashes every time. It's gotta be plugged into the wall now, which is like, wow, well, that's like, a. I didn't realize what a big part of the value proposition was until I had to be attached to a wall with that. And I'm like, well, now it's just like this thing on my desk that I hardly ever use. So it's a drag. Yeah. And, um, it's, um, you can use sites like, like I fix it 
and uh, get kits and directions, very clear step by step. Uh, if if you are uh, feeling up to the challenge to actually, you know, take apart and replace a battery and all that stuff, but it's it's not for the faint of heart. And what's fun, I even have an iFixit for uh, my old iPhone six, mm. and I honestly haven't had the the gumption to. to to go for it it's just sitting on my shelf because i'm like oh my word i uh, i don't know <laughs> it's you know like suction cup pull the glass apart you know like you're you're using the little spudgers and you know removing little, ah <laughs> maybe right <laughs> but like that the, that window on my calendar has not uh, there's no point point my calendar spoke to me and said clearly you should you know take apart an iphone today i'm like yeah anyway <laughs> um so something else really reliable that um, that I discovered when um, you know moving over to Android now more I've I've been like a, a dabbler in Android I never fully left because I develop apps for Android too so um, but like really making a workhorse machine um, like like fully fledged uh, living on Android again that that's that's pretty new to me in a way right but like still there's this rely there are reliable things i'm reaching for as i'm going to this new platform and uh honestly day one that that journal app is uh let's see what would be yeah i'm totally not showing my journal on screen so don't oh. worry about that. oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> are you sure thanks for the cue <laughs> now for the goods <laughs> Secrets. And I teased everybody in the in the Discord and everything. But you've been talking about day one for a long time. I mean, it's come up yeah. many times on the on the show. The show is um, it's a journaling app. I'll look it up on online while you while you talk about it. And about a year and a half ago, I started to feel tenuous about it because they really up the the they they up the price. I think they they brought the subscription back down a little bit. But what I like is if you're subscribed, you can use it on any platform. So I was hesitant, but, you know, after investigating, like I said, moving into this fresh Android apartment, looking for my old friends and day one turns out didn't want to, you know, get an extra um, subscription fee. So uh, now I'm uh, now I'm wholehearted again about about day one. It's it's really good at just that one thing. I love taking notes, but a journal on a timeline is a different creature like piles and piles of notes in a, in a folder on a machine, it, you can, you could craft things that make it into sort of a living journal, but it's uh, so day one does a few things where it will pull in your Instagram posts and mm. it will um, you can feed it through other services and stuff too. So you can have a little bit of your trail of things you share get imported in automatically Plus, it will prompt you and say, "Hey, want to write in your journal?" And if you're if you're just game for it, just getting anything out of your head at that point in time is way better than not doing any journaling. Mm -hmm. Anything you capture and can look back upon, it it will bring you to some extent to like you're connecting your consciousness over time, so you become this more you and uh that's what i love about a good journal and it, it does the job so I, it I, works well on android i was i was working with some students recently who were like nine ten years old and i had the marvelous uh experience of introducing them to a concept that they were familiar with but framing it in a way that sounded a little bit more magical and and like it kind of contextualized in a way that made it feel more like oh th this is why grown-ups tell me this is important and i watched their eyes kind of go like ah oh, and it was really cool and what it was is is that they were they were really struggling with this idea of like keeping everything in their head i have to memorize everything i have to memorize all the details of a motorcycle so i can draw a motorcycle and i said no 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 that's not nobody's expecting you to do that and like that's what books are for we we invented books to like outsource our brains to like create containers for our brains so that our brains doesn't have to hold that you know, and they're like what that's that's what a book is i'm like yeah is that cool you know it's like this idea of journaling is kind of a similar principle of like it's hold it's putting that someplace so you don't have to hold on to it right you can go back and refer to it 
Um, it's, it's outsourcing your memory, outsourcing your brain, putting it again, Sean Connery, I wrote it in a book, so I don't have to remember it, right? But I can go back to re re refer to it. It's, and that is super useful when you're, when you're leaving yourself notes to, to remember things of utility, but it's even useful if it's just a feeling. And, and when it's a combination of, of feelings and utilities and, recipes and experiences and stories uh it it really it's it's a really helpful thing to to be able to jump into your own perspective at a different point in time and you can see how maybe you've grown or changed or you haven't you're like and some some things i notice is like holy crap i've been thinking about this for a long time <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, so I can't pretend like this thing I care about a lot. It's like, um, maybe I need to really get increase the priority of developing my next game because what, what have you, right? So like, just be, you know, pick a thing you care a lot about and all of a sudden you connect it, it becomes, uh, it's, 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 it's just more clear, like the, like what something might mean to you and, uh, you know, even though that that's it's clear now, but now you're you're not looking at past you, like standing in a line of in different timelines, and they're all they're saying stuff to you. It's you saying stuff to you, which that has a a pretty uh, powerful utility to it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, uh, we like to journal. <laughs> yeah. in, case, in case in case anybody's missed that point. Um, Cool. So day one app, uh, and let's do you. You cool with doing one more? I'll take one more, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll talk about some candidates. Like all right. Uh, all right. So you'll do one more. I do one more. If you want, or just one more. I can do a fast one. Okay, you do a fast one. I'll I'll do a really fast one. Um, okay. I'm thinking a lot about my health as I get older, and I'm noticing that the joints are a little creakier than they used to be. I'm making weird clicky noises at times when I move around. And so um, this is actually by way of my wife, my wonderful wife, Anne, who pointed me at this ergonomic mouse, the Logitech Vertical Advanced Ergonomic Mouse. I've been using this for about uh, two years now. No, about a year. I want to say a year, a little bit more than that, but I'm actually using it right now. And uh, it's, it's been really, really helpful to keep me from twisting my wrist around in a funny way when I'm using a mouse. I'm noticing that my forearm muscles aren't quite as strained from using a mouse or a trackpad. Um, the, I love my VioZ canvas very much, but, um, the trackpad on that thing is not the most fun thing to use in the entire world. Um, so yeah, it's right here. I mean, I don't know, there it is in the shot, mm -hmm. but it's about that big and it is, has rechargeable batteries, plug it in via USB-C and it's got a scroll wheel on it. And so like I'm, my hand is kept like this position all the time when I'm mm -hmm. using my mouse, I'm using my arm instead of my wrist. So... Uh, I've noticed that that's been, uh, my arm has felt better this past year in using this mouse. Um, it's kind of a big thing, kind of like, it's like a, like, like a sailboat on my desk, but, uh, but it, it, it feels really good. It feels like natural cause your hand just like goes to it the way you would, like you'd reach for a coffee mug. So, okay. Yeah, that is, uh, I, yeah, really, that's a really good fast pick. I've, I, I know other folks who use those, those kinds of, of mice and I've, uh, I've been, I, I've considered it because um, trackballs are kind of like my mm, okay ergonomic solution. It it's uh, and I don't know. I just like trackballs. Probably blame it on arcade cabinets. Though I, I never have, have been a yeah. golf trackball person. Oh yeah, look at that. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Logitech. Um, <laughs> Logitech trackball bros. <laughs> boom. <laughs> Here we go. We're in the club. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Um, I don't know if this is my other, my super fast pick. Um, so you, audio output, uh, there's a couple kinds of audio output. I don't use that frequently, but when I do, uh, what, what's it's funny, one I've never used. So I've never used coaxial audio output, never for anything. Hmm. But I've used um, like, so in the back of some, you know, like PCs and whatnot, especially big enough machines, you may have a few different kinds of audio output. Or if you had a fancy sound card or what have you back in the day. But like uh, the SPDIF, the one where it's it's essentially um, it's 
it's a, um, I mean, it's light. <laughs> the, the, it's, it's, so it's a d digital signal converted with, you know, so over light that is, um, you know, that you need to convert back into analog at some point in your chain. But you can get a clean signal out of a machine that maybe has a bit of RF uh, noise or the, the uh, 60 hertz hum or what have you. And, um, and, and this, this will, uh, I don't, I can't really show it. It's under my desk. Okay. So. Yeah, I had it on screen. I had it on screen for a second there, but yeah, I saw that too. Then thank okay. you for doing that. Um, it's, it, it basically I went from having this weird, uh, especially when the volume was low on anything I was I uh, was monitoring over my studio monitors, like just even fun music as I work or, um, been you know I've been making music again too. So, uh, it's it's just great to get a clean signal out of speakers and and not hear those weird hisses and hums and stuff or like fan noise mm. that is translated into weird audio artifacts. Mm. So it's the digital SPDIF to analog audio RCA RL converter with an optical yep. toss link cable. It sounds exotic. <laughs> It's, it sounds like something Jordy's little <laughs> forge would be working with. <laughs> it's yeah, you do get to see all the if you if you look into the cable, you will no, you'll see space. No, it don't do that. Um, don't don't look into the cable. <laughs> all right, well, good. I I feel like we got got through some good picks. Uh, let's talk. Let's take a break, and then we'll talk about um some. Uh, things that we've been thinking about of adding to, like things we've been playing with, things we've been wondering about as adding to our beloved uh, re reliable tool set. But first, we got to thank some people who make the show possible. And those are the people who support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash LenaTort is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote, help make the show more sustainable. Uh, by contributing as little as a dollar a month. And you can also do a one-time contribution and then just like check out after a month, you know. But I want to thank five people who've been supporting us on a regular basis because it means a lot to us. So Nate Marcel, you can find Nate on Twitter at Great Sea Monster. Thank you, Nate, for believing in us and what we do. And Brandon Dayton. Brandon Dayton, the amazing cartoonist, illustrator, host of the uh, How to Be an Artist podcast. You can find Brandon on Twitter at Brandon Dayton. And Chris Watkins. Thank you, Chris. It means a lot to us. Stephen Stonebush. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, it's been great to hang out with you in the, the Discord. We'll talk about more about that in a second. And Becky Hilburn, who you can find on all social media at Natto Soup. And you can join them all at patreon.com slash art, where you'll find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record monthly only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want in a safe space with fellow leaners, but it also gets you access to the Lean Into Art Discord. Well, actually, everybody has access to the Discord itself, but we have three special channels that are only for people who support us on Patreon. And the way that you join is to go to patreon.com slash leanintoart. Thanks to everybody who's been supporting us there. It means a lot to us. Thank you so much. All right, let's get some more music to get us into the next part of the show. superhero music well it was like the grim superhero music okay so mm -hmm. discovering new tools new picks new things that we're adding and playing with and seeing what you know what sticks um where do we find like oh this is the thing that i needed to solve this problem all along uh you you want to you want to go first i went first last time you all right time. fine um so the music that I just used was generated by this website called Filmstro. Have you heard of this, Rob? I haven't. What's this business? So, okay, so this may be less compelling to you as somebody who can make your own music. And I, yes, I, my brother Elliot has created the music we just heard with the uh, the, the Patreon section, mm -hmm. um, and he's created the theme songs for a lot of my um, projects in the past, but. Um, if like if you ever need like a bed of background music that doesn't that isn't too repetitive or you need it to change up like for instance that White Castle video that I shot with uh, my wife Anne for CXC this year I used this service. What Filmstro is is it it's a bunch of 
uh, music that you can purchase a license to, and then you could use it for like whatever you want to do uh, use it for. But you can, I'll, I'll just play this track here. So here's this track, Mekong. And then there's these three sliders, and you can on the fly change the depth, the power, the momentum. <laughs> and then you can slide it back down. More power. Less power. And how about a little less depth? And then it's going to get quiet here. And then I'm gonna bring up the momentum. So it basically is like sort of like stock music that where they've added like a little bit of extra functionality to it in terms of like you can modify the music on the fly and create like a, a two minute version, a three minute version, and you have to download an app to do it. And it's $30 a month for the service. So it is a paid service. Um, but if you're looking to create some like background beds of music, like what we did for the White Castle video, and you want it to just not be this repetitive like one minute of audio, but you want it to actually change to, based on what you're seeing happening on the screen. This is a pretty intuitive and simple approach to create some like non-intrusive sort of like atmospheric music. But but like I said, it also I use it to make all these different tracks for um, the Super Comics Challenge. So like when I play things like this, this was done with Filmstro. So. So, so you could do that's, search, yeah. Some, some crunch in there. So yeah, you could do searches by mood, and you could say like, okay, well, I want aggressive and combative, or I want awe and shock. I want cheeky music, <laughs> <laughs> curious and investigative music. And then you can, if you have the premium account, you can download the track, and then it, it opens up in like a Garage Band interface where you import the track and then you play with those three sliders of power, depth, and um, momentum to create different swells and fades in the music so that you have something that feels like it was composed for you, um, you know, in, in a fairly simple way. I, I, I wouldn't actually necessarily use this to, com you know, do a film soundtrack. But for doing like a small little documentary film or something like that, it seems like this is like has a lot to offer in terms of um, putting music in the hands of people who don't necessarily know how to make music. But it could at least tell that like, OK, it feels like it needs to be bigger here. Let's just add more power to it. Let's turn the power down. Right. That's really that's pretty fantastic. I mean, it's it's a bit of that uh, um, skill amplification principle in in, you know, experience design, interactive design. You're, you're trying to uh, provide capabilities that have, um, they're purposefully simplified, but, but in an enabling way that, I mean, you've reduced so much complexity and uh, there's so many tools in music that, um, I mean, you can, you can really approach uh, getting audio into the world from so many different uh, angles and directions now. You don't just have to perform the instrument mm -hmm. and um, record a performance. That performance could become other things. And there's, uh, and, and yeah, so, so it, what an interesting, um, interesting service. The, I'm, the other, I'm the other neat thing I, I neglected to mention is when you're using the GarageBand style interface, you actually drop your film in. So I, I edited the film for the White Castle video oh. first. You drop the film in, and then I play it, and then I can move the sliders live while the video is playing. Or, and then after the fact, I can also say, like, well, let's tweak it. Let's go back and, and mess with sort of like the same way you can mess with, like, volume control in GarageBand after the fact by moving those little, like, dots and lines to move them up yeah. and down. You, uh, you can do the same thing with those three sliders after the fact. So you can, like, fine-tune it. Again, it's... It, I it, I would have preferred to be able to reach out to my brother and say, hey, can you give me a three-minute video? Here's the or three-minute track. Here's the video soundtrack for me. That would have been the ideal scenario. I had to turn this around in 48 hours, and then when I found film struggle, like, okay, this will let me do that. So it's it permits like really quick on the fly editing uh, for people who maybe don't have the turnaround time they would like, or maybe the resources to musicians that they would like. Um, and then when you make the track. It, you have a license to use it on platforms like YouTube and so on, so you don't have to worry about the what is it? What is that 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 digital detective that they have there that like says like ah that music belongs to somebody else? Um, uh, audio fingerprinting. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
So, so none of my Super Comics Challenge videos have been uh, flagged because I've been using the Filmstro tracks for that. So that's yeah. that's really good. Um, it's uh, yeah, interesting puzzles. So many layers and, and difficulties as as far as uh, use of art and uh, compensating the artists and all that kind of stuff. It's a challenging, complicated ecosystem. It's nice to see that there's tools like this that help you. Um, you know, sidestep that. Uh, but, uh, okay. Interesting. Um, how about, uh, I could do a pick please. All right. I, something that is both, uh, familiar and new is, is, um, there, there's, there's this app that I used to use on windows. Wait, hold on a sec. Hold, uh, I like bam. For a <laughs> okay. <laughs> As Rob goes to the back of the room, he's getting an actual right. box that software used had to, to come in. A prop. Yep, this is from this because is from I back in the old it. days when software came in boxes, right? Cakewalk, three point ah. one. Sorry, here's I'm trying to find my camera sweet spot here. Three point well, three point zero for Windows three point one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so imagine so check this out, um, <laughs> time traveler. <laughs> by 12 tone systems totally you know not the company name so cakewalk has has had an interesting um you know evolution as software that's this old and, and used and check it out oh my gosh that's a 3.5 inch floppy disk is that what that is uh -huh. or three quarter inch oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness mm. oh yeah 1.5 megabytes 1991 to 92 by oh Greg Hendershot. So no, okay. Question: what, Did you yeah. are there more than one, and they're daisy chained, where you have to keep putting in disc after disc in order to uh, load the software? No, if I got my box for Director Eight Point One, that would uh, that was a stack of discs. Yeah, so many floppies. But um, it's oh yeah. Well, geez, while when while we're at it, we got to give you the the full on. <laughs> um, here's the manual. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> it is a manual of biblical proportions. It truly is. It's, it has some heft. This it's, is... it's a weapons grade manual. Oh man, when software <laughs> used to come with these manuals, oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. And what's funny is, so this was a MIDI sequencer. Wow. So all of all a MIDI sequencer does is um, it's essentially a computerized piano roll. If you think about like player pianos, the original tech had a, you know, a holes punched in paper. Um, uh, something would, would notice there's a hole and it would hit the, uh, you know, the key on the, key, on the piano that would, you know, relate to that, uh, that note that that hole represented. And anyway, so MIDI is like a, um, a, 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 a format for, for arranging information to tell what sound to play and uh, so what type of sound to play and what pitch to play, what, what modulation and what um, other, other um, nuances. So and when, when to play it and yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. So when to play, how long, et cetera. So it, um, yeah, so this, this was this much of an app just for that ability. So I'm not talking about, and it could record a voice or anything like that. It was just the MIDI sequencer. So anyway, <laughs> um, so Cakewalk uh, and became Sonar. Sonar, um, you know, didn't, didn't succeed at, at one point. But then someone bought the rights to it and made uh, this... Some in some combination that I don't know the full pattern or history of, they went, they made this this service called Band Lab, and released what they renamed Sonar as is Cakewalk once again, right? So the name Cakewalk came back, and so you have this this um, <laughs> you know modern version of a uh, digital audio workstation that can do MIDI and virtual instruments and all the kinds of things that are that that come with the the modern you know audio workstation and like back in the day i had a license for sonar too somewhere in a storage crate i've got my cd of you know sonar 
I don't remember what 6.0 or something. And it was, um, uh, very capable, but you would license and get like the level of capability that, you know, based on, you know, they had bundles of, of, of features, right? So to get all the features, it was a really expensive license, uh, somewhere around a thousand bucks. I did not have that license. And I, I always would be like, wow, you know, I had no need for it, but I'm like, yeah, mixing 3D positional audio, wouldn't that be fun? And, you know, stuff like that never had a need, but, but I would covet these features. And, and uh, the new situation is the fullest version of, of Cakewalk, you know, renamed Sonar, what have you, it has, it, it's all free. It's, it's, it's available. It's, it's one package and you sign up for band lab. Um, I don't fully understand the exact why and what makes it sustainable other than there is a, um, a, I think a wealthy individual in I think Singapore that, is you know facilitating this this whole company and uh, bought the rights and is a musician and owns a chain of music stores and stuff and I don't know but anyway Cakewalk is free if you if so if you have a Windows workstation capable of running it and all that um, it's it's a really powerful tool um, then it also kind of integrates with this this cloud based thing called Band Lab that. Um, you need to get your band lab account to get your cakewalk up and running. But then uh, it also, it's almost like an, uh, a GitHub kind of thing, but for audio projects. And you become an entity that can make bands or albums and all this kind of stuff. And you can collaborate on each other's works. You can fork each other's works like you can with source code in, um, uh, in GitHub. So let's see, I think I have the, I can, I can show my window of, um, band lab. Now I'm talking about that. Okay. Uh, let's see. How's that? Yeah. Okay. We'll just tootle, tootle around band lab for a second here. So I've been exploring, um, like my old MIDI files and all this kind of stuff, but you can also, um, do this, this it, in a way of uh, it, it it's it's loop uh, composition and it's it reminds me a lot of what um, Jersey was describing that Filmstro could do but it's it's like more complicated Filmstro um, so you could go in and um, well I suppose I could start a new song or I could show you a a, a project that's that's already uh, put together. Um, let's see. So if I, I don't know if my audio is coming through here. You getting the audio? Mm hmm So this was composed by using a loop editor. And do I have access to the loops anymore? And I'm still learning this thing. So no, I'm not seeing the loops. Um, open and mix editor. So, so the mix is kind of like when where you, you're putting together the final, you know, adjustments in volume and stuff like that. But okay. um, what were you saying, Jersey? Oh, uh, just cur curious. When you, when you talk about this being like a GitHub kind of thing, does that mean like I could go and open up somebody else's project and sort of deconstruct how they put it together? Like people can submit their, their sort of... D or uh, their their compositions as a what we'd call in like a, a visual editor a, a layered file and we'd be able to go in and see how it's all and and be able to like mess with it. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Exactly. Oh so, my gosh. Um so I can audition different clips to to bring in. Um let's see or I can set up my MIDI instruments and stuff like that. But then, so I'm not seeing the loop editor. I'm going to just do a quick show you what it's like. Um, uh, I'll, I'll create, let's say, uh, browse loops. Um, let's, so this is where I'm new to it. So when I, I created that composition on my mobile device, and let's just pick something. And can we just, can we go with that? Just go ahead. Nope. So anyway, I'm going to have to learn this app more, right? Okay. I'm just sort of 
noodling around, but I'm telling you, when I when I start, it's where is the view? So maybe it's view. Nope. So it brought me to a loop editor, and a loop editor has a sort of a grid of uh, portions of a song, right? And you can essentially um, in rhythm to whatever you've configured is the is like so. This is set up for 120 beats beats per minute, uh, four beats per measure, right? And uh, that uh, that would that that creates this underlying sort of like synchronizing for how these loops play, and I it's just killing me here that I you know like I said I didn't I I didn't learn this enough to like teach it this app, um, especially jumping between it because what's funny is like I mentioned mobile right mm -hmm. I suppose I might be able to just jump to the mobile ver version. Um, Maybe I'll do that. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at like uh, images of the mobile app right now, and this is bananas that you can have layered audio files. You can have MIDI MIDI files. You can have analog files, and you're mixing them all down right on your phone. What? So <laughs> yeah, it's it's really really Aaron, empowering. And, Aaron uh, Polk is watching live and just said, "Ah, if only this program had a Bible for a manual like the other one." <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, look at me fumble around. That's it. I, I don't know. Like that. That. Uh, it was kind of neat having manuals. Like you could walk away from the from the workstation and uh, sit down and think. <laughs> um, uh, uh, th that never worked for like I'm, I'm much more of an audiovisual learner. So like those manuals are always like eye roll. But um. But yeah, this is the kind of thing where maybe we'll, like we'll come back and look at it again. But like I, I, I can see what you're pointing. You're pointing at the potential of something uh -huh. like this, and the fact that it's free. This feels like it's doing a lot of things that Ableton Live is doing, which is like an eight hundred dollar program. Um. And yeah, ab absolutely, yes. I mean, that, and that's the the class of app that that uh, Cakewalk is too. All right, so I am. I'm fumbling on multiple dimensions here, so I'm just going to go back to presenter. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on. Um, but but uh, it's free. Yeah. It, that's also exciting. Like this is a digital audio workstation that is time tested. It's been around for a long time. Parts of it is so like Cakewalk is is that right, and then BandLab is really robust. I don't fully get the the changes in interface going from the the mobile or tablet version mm -hmm. or you know to the to the desktop i guess that's another way to do it too um so it just uh oh, i just at least would love to show the darn um but maybe i can come back to that um the, the premise the, of this the, section too is like noticing tools that have potential anyway right so yeah and so it is a newer tool in my toolbox but like even so coming back to cakewalk after that you know after many years like after i, I left you know with the windows platform and, and it's been a while since i've done any music creation on it so cakewalk is kind of new to me again but then band lab is entirely new like it's been around for a couple of years and um <clears throat> Yeah, and you can you can tackle it from a variety of angles. Look at just look around at interesting projects. I mean, if you ever wanted to sing metal vocals, find a find a song that's looking for a vocalist and just jump in. If you need a background uh, song, you can go look around and 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 there are people who are publishing their music and you can you can license their music. Uh, some folks that have an open license, um, other you know, or you can go in from the collaboration angle too, where you can you know download it and add that thing that might be missing um oh that's so cool the, that's so internet-y that is so like web 2.0 internet-y that's great so while you're looking i also want to read some more comments uh so ashley is is watching live on uh the the discord channel um and says that i used to collect midi files before music streaming got big i still listen to them sometimes to get nostalgic they're like music boxes for millennial gamers <laughs> <laughs> music oh that's awesome <laughs> so okay you got the it only had a little handle to crank <laughs> um so so what's interesting i'll see I, i'm gonna yeah i should i'll switch back to the so if i go ipad and i grab this screen again so this is uh, so i'm back on the samsung tablet 
And if I go back, so now look at how I couldn't find the looper uh, interface in the web browser version. So I was in a web browser and that's what BandLab kind of is, is like on your desktops, you open up a web browser and you have a full digital audio workstation there. That is bananas. Most of the tools. So that's, that is pretty bananas. And then on mobile devices there, there may be, maybe there's a feature set difference here because again, I could not find the looper. Um, but let's say, um, oh, let's see what sounds, I don't know, I guess. J-pop pocket. J-pop pocket. Is that your choice? Okay. That's my choice. So if I, if I click on it, it'll, it'll download. And I think I click on it again. Now I open it in the looper. Uh, do I have audio? I don't know if I have audio coming from this. Yep. It's coming in on your microphone. Okay. So. So now I'm. So at the right time, you'll see the the sort of shift over. Like I, I will activate something or activate or, or deactivate it. And in rhythm, it will activate or turn on or turn off. I see. I see. So for people who are just listening to the audio, it's it's an array of buttons that are marked with bass, drum, guitar, uh, keyboard, piano, and synth. And Rob is just toggling between different buttons to like sort of combine, like like sort of like bring in more bass, bring bringing in the keyboard, sending the keyboard out. But the app is actually synchronizing these things. So like even if Rob hits it now, it's like yeah, but I need two more beats before this will be fully synced up. So it waits the two beats and then activates the music. So this is like yeah. a more granular version of what I was demonstrating with Filmstro. Yes, yes, very much so. So that is just saying like, so this song has pre-prepared loops that, so there's, there's you know, four synth, four piano, four keyboard, four guitar, four drum, four bass. And um, all I did was, I mean, I was getting a little bit clever with, with the rhythm of when I'd activate and deactivate stuff, mm -hmm. but that's not a high hurdle. Um, Get wow. a little bit of counting practice, right? One and two and three and four and one. You know, all of a sudden you're like, you know, all right, jump in. All right, do yeah. quick turn off all that. And yeah. you're yeah. you're composing. And it's um, you know, with loops. So it's a pretty empowering thing. Um, not quite as uh focused as film stro, but but still pretty empowering. That's cool. No, that's really cool. I mean, and, and some the these are the um sort of trade-offs to evaluate when look at these things is like what Rob is demonstrating is a little bit more granular or granular, uh, but it's free. Um, and there's a community component to it in terms of people are collaborating and sharing and you can, you know, you have more options in terms of like pulling from pre-made things depending on the license and so on. Whereas Filmstro is like, okay, it's $30 a month, but that premium you're paying for is if you really feel overwhelmed and intimidated by the idea of generating music and all you know is you just want something that feels haunting, search haunting, move these sliders and you've got something, right? You got something workable and you've got a license with it. So that's, that's the nature of determining. I feel like that, that, that thinking exercise is the nature of determining what tools that you become your beloved favorites is based on what trade-offs you want to make. Mm, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And it's that the the idea of becoming it it is a um it's there's a timeline, right? It's 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 like you you have a need where where here I am. I have a variety of of um uh workshops at different stages of development. And I am at suddenly in a situation where like, oh gosh, I need more you know, like sort of like background audio, intro outro, stuff like that. And I, and I'm like, well, what can, you know, let me get that workflow fired up again. And, and what, what's current, what's familiar and am I skilled up at and what's, you know, what else is out there? And um, yeah. And so I happened to stumble into, um, you know, band lab in this case, but hmm. uh, what, um, what about you? What's uh, what's, what's an emerging or Im discovery? Okay. Two, let's do let's do one more each. Um, I've got one that is less of I, I have okay, so like I have zero 
experience with this device. But given that you were talking about the, the, the Galaxy Tab S6, uh, it reminded me of something that I've been kind of curious about for some time now and I've been doing, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of reviews of these devices. But these e ink sketch pads, have you been tracking this at all, Rob? A little bit, but I had no idea there was something e ink that's that was uh four hundred eighty dollars well yeah yeah so this one okay so it's it's got pressure sensitivity um so it's like a, a ink is like a kindle right okay so here's one of the reasons i'm so interested in this technology is that years ago i got uh for the holidays i got ann and me pebble watches do you remember those rob oh i do those it, were really cool they were e-ink smart watches that i felt like were the perfect device in that it really wasn't meant for making calls or, um, you know, it had an accelerometer so you could do like like exercise tracking. It gave you your notifications, but it really was just like this this cool watch that had a lot of cool watch faces that lasted a week. You didn't have to recharge it every day. It would last an entire week on a single charge. And it gave you just like a sense of what was going on in your life. Actually, when it when first got it, we could do voice to text. So I could like, you know, hit a button on my watch and send a text to Anne. You know, like I'm going to be there in 15 minutes and she would get a text about it. But we hardly ever use that. Like we mostly just use it for like notifications, ex you know, motion tracking, exercise tracking, and just having a timepiece on our body. Um, and so... I love the fact that it was pretty reliable tech. And I still have mine, right? But it's like I, I, the one thing it didn't have was like a heart rate monitor. And I want to start being a little bit more careful about my health. So we got newer, you know, whatever these are, the fossil watches. Um, but I still am compelled by this idea of like e-ink can be like, you know, uh, 230 PPI now, right? You, so you can get like pretty darn close to real life resolution. And there are these companies companies who are making pressure sensitive ones and the batteries on these things are unreal, right? Like the battery life is unreal, I should say, right? It's, it's, you can get, you know, supposedly on, uh, the remarkable, which is one of the ones I've been watching. Um, they're promising like two weeks of, of battery life. Right. Mm. Um, and they're like super thin. Uh, now the difference I've been watching the books, no air and the remarkable, they're both around the same price, 400 to 500 bucks. Um, the remarkable, their value proposition is that we're going to, this thing is really only meant to be a notebook. Um, there's no web browser on it. You can't watch YouTube on it. Um, it's, it's not meant for like a general internet -y device. As a matter of fact, it's really kind of hard to read eBooks on it. It's like, like I was watching videos on how to get eBooks loaded onto it. And it seems like not super intuitive. Um, but it's got super awesome pens and brushes on it. It's got pressure sensitivity. It's got tilt sensitivity. And it can export to SVG files. So if you do a sketch on this thing, you can have like a, a nice vector file to like take into other apps to work with. Um, and it's, uh, it's got layers on it, right? So I was, I'm looking at this and going like, wow, that'd be a really cool sketchbook. And then we have to worry about charging it all the time, you know? But then the Note Air, its value proposition is all that and it's got full Android 10 on it. So you can actually watch YouTube on an e ink display, a black and white e ink display. Uh, it's got like an accelerometer, so you can turn it sideways and use it portrait mode. It's got like a backlight on it. So, and you look at it, it's like, it's crazy thin and small, right? Um, so, like I said, I haven't used any of these yet, but I've been watching them because I just feel like there's something feels very, I'm, it piques my curiosity, this idea of, oh, and the Remarkable uh, too. they've done the surface so that it's supposed to feel like as much like paper as it possibly can. And there's like almost zero latency. So like I was watching a video of like a, a graphic designer drawing on it and he was kind of losing his mind. He's like, this is like paper. This is like, this is the future. We used to write in clay tablets. Then we worked on paper. Then we worked on paper. Now we're going to work on this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Let's, I I get you're excited. Too close to coffee break. <laughs> okay, but at the same time, it's like, what did he experience that like I'm missing out on? I, and I want to find out, you know. So, um, but yeah, the books note air and the remarkable two or two that I'm watching right now is is like potential like. I love the idea of saying like, hey, you can't use the internet on this thing. How about that? You just like, you could upload your files as SVG files to your, your desktop, but this thing's really meant to be a sketchbook. I'm like that's interesting. So. Yeah. I, what is it? There's, there's a, like a, there's a space of stuff that 
it, it's almost like just watching who shows up in your yard, right? Uh, because you just, you just care about a certain zone and things show up in there and someone's like, hey, uh, new way to draw. Mm, interesting. What do you mean, right? Or new way to draw that's related to um, like a tradi traditional instruments you're, you're, you're accustomed to, the analog world and the digital world. Oh, mm. you know, and, and yeah, I, I, it's so funny how that thing, um, that kind of stuff comes along. Um, I like looking back, I know we talked tons about band lab, but the, the background of, of you know, like me needing band lab was more than just, okay. Uh, I have a good chunk of music that I would prefer to make myself. I don't have to, I could, and I, and I would like to make it not loop based because you can use garage band to do loop based composition and whatnot as well to garage band on the Apple, um, the Mac OS and iOS platforms, uh, very capable, wonderful tool. Um, but I'm just trying to expand. So I have the urge to expand and I'm like, gosh, I have this windows machine. I want to find something that I can make music with. I know it's gotta be there. I didn't. And I was, I've been dabbling once in a while, taking a break, looking around, like who's showing up in my curiosity yard. And it, I didn't find it. And then one day, boop, I found band lab. I, I know, don't know what search term I changed, but all of a sudden here, here it was. And it's because of that, that hunch or urge or caring about a particular space. And, um, and, and that's, that's one of the, the ways where like I, just new tools do, they, they keep popping up. And I don't tune into everyone, but like, it was almost like a wish that got fulfilled. And like Band Lab isn't new, but I wanted something like it for so long and not that long, but you know, felt long. Um, anyway, uh, it's, that's a funny mechanism. Um, I'm going to mention, because I, I really like to write in plain text. Um, so I'm just a fan of plain text. I, I, I like code. I like to, you know, uh, write web pages and, you know, just using raw HTML, that kind of thing. And when I, when I do, when I write a lot of thoughts, I, I like having it in plain text. I've been like back in the old times of windows, I would use notepad all the time. And uh, anyway, so I I've adopted markdown in all the all kinds of different places that um, because it's a way to sort of get a little bit of semantics mixed in with the plain text and you can render it in different interesting ways. And um, because of this, this new multi-platform situation that I'm experiencing on Mac, on Windows, on um, the, uh, you know, iOS and Android, right? Uh, I've got this set of notes that, that I use to just keep track of stuff and also where I'm composing new things, new workshops, new articles, stuff like that. I, and just practice writing and stories, it just, it's got to go somewhere and Markdown is where I want it to be. And I want it to sync across the platforms, all this stuff. But I wasn't liking my current tool on, on Mac OS and, and I wasn't liking the current tool I was using on Windows either. And I stumbled into Typora or I assume that's how you pronounce it, Typora. Um, it's currently free. And I think they're going to charge for it eventually. And it's, um, it works pretty darn well. I'm synchronizing notes through a Dropbox folder. And I'm uh, uh, on Mac and Windows using Typora to navigate a pretty big list of notes. So it lets you, like, when you're, when you're editing, you can kind of, you can see a folder view next to it as well. But it's but it's not clunky. It's still pretty elegant looking and and simplified. And you can do a quick filtered search, and find the thing you're looking for and start editing it. Really, uh, a pretty good workflow. And then when you uh, you can save settings too, where if you reopen the app, it will um, it will uh, like remember uh, your some some preferences. If you want to always open a certain folder, like if you have a place where you stick a lot of notes or what have you, it'll it'll do that. Um, and, or it will reopen the last, uh, documents you, you were editing every time you launch and stuff like that. And it's just the combination of this, this, uh, the typing experience where it goes into the app as Markdown plain text, right? So Markdown, it's like, if you want to bold something, you have, you surround a word or, or 
phrase with asterisks, or if you want to make a heading, you do, um, you know, uh, let's see, what would pound sign, pound sign, or hashtag, hashtag, or octothorpe, octothorpe or whatever that symbol is, right? Um, and it will, uh, uh, well, I'll give you a heading. Like, you know, one of those is a, is a heading one, two, three, you know, et cetera. It's, anyway, it's, it's um, so I like Markdown and I like the experience where you, you type it in. And in this app, it actually turns into the visualization of that text. So it's kind of neat. Um, you, you put in a, like a, um, a, a dash to start a, 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 or an unordered list and it knows that you're in a list. So if you hit enter, it's still continuing that list and it's now rendering everything like that too. And it'll do the whole like, like the check box markdown too. I figure if that's the um, multi markdown, like the little enhanced version of markdown, what have you. But yeah, anyway, Typora, it's, um, it's behaves pretty good. And I, I'll buy a license when, uh, when they offer it. Hmm. It's free for now though. Well, that's great. We'll put that in the show notes as well. All right. Uh, I think we went through a lot of picks. Uh, so do you want to check in real quick on our two minute practice and then, uh, wrap this one up? Uh, second ad spot and yes, yes. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Yes. Second ad spot first, then Uh, we'll come back and talk about our picks. Let me pull up the things for our ad spot. <laughs> oh, we can. I, I'm happy to to do really, you know, brief. <clears throat> no, I got it. It's already up. Quick version here. <clears throat> oh, all right. No so worries. we'll come back in about a minute and a half to two minutes. And then we're going to talk about check in on our two minute practice. Remind ourselves what it is before we get to it next week, and um, and then you know close out the show. If anybody has any picks that they want to share uh, live in the. Uh, the Discord or in the chat uh, for any of the different services that we're streaming on. Now would be the time to do it while we're doing this um, this little ad spot. So, okay. We'll come back and talk about those things after we thank some more people who make the show possible. Those people happen to be us. We make the show possible. We work hard on all sorts of different projects and bring all that hard thinking into this thing we call Lena Tuart. And the thing that I hope you will check out that I work on is this thing called the 4 Million Years Later podcast. And yes, it's another podcast that I create um, but this one is a story analysis pro- podcast with me and my buddy Hoover, where we watch an episode a week of the Generation One Transformers cartoon in story order, and then we spend about an hour to an hour and a half deconstructing it and analyzing it and evaluating it from the standpoint of how we engaged with it as children and how we feel about it as adults. And it's it's interesting to find out how some episodes didn't connect with me as a child, but like really connect with me as an adult. And some episodes that I felt really um, like motivated powerfully emotionally by as a child, I have a, a different perspective on now as an adult. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a fun show. We got 41 episodes, well, mo- well, more than that. But like the latest episode is actually... Uh, Hoover walks off the show, and I'm joined by my friend Chris Giruso uh, of the G-Man comic series uh, to talk about the episode Heavy Metal War and sort of his relationship with Transformers. We spent a lot of time talking about the Transformers movie uh, and what that what it was like experiencing that as children. But the one before that is The Golden Lagoon, which is... Um, it's a heavy duty episode and it ends with it, instead of the heroes all looking up the sky and laughing like they used to do in a lot of those 80s cartoons, it ends with a decimated forest and a very sad Autobot sitting on a rock contemplating how war ravages the earth and he just says quietly, we won. Um, so that, that it's, it's a, that's a pretty fun discussion, uh, even though it's dealing with some pretty heavy duty uh, material and that is 4millionyearslater.com or in podcatchers everywhere. Rob, do you want to talk about your store? I do. So I offer a variety of products and services. I make games, I make workshops, and uh, I do coaching, right? And you can find how to access any of that stuff I do at robstenzinger.com slash store.html. And just to highlight a couple of things that I do like to highlight of late because they are timeless and incredibly useful. And I bet you listening to the Lean Into Art podcast probably care a lot about making things that work well and connect with the audience, but also um, your collaborators. And when you're in a situation like that, sometimes it helps to tell a a well-rounded story on a timeline. And that can be 
a journey map. So drawing user journey maps is a uh, like a 47 minute class job that uh, that has a you know, built in practical project that lets you learn this uh, this approach to design user experience, gather ideas and collaborate. And it's um, it lets you see like a bigger picture. And uh, it's very helpful for you as an individual to sort of um, get multiple ways of thinking going and, uh, you know, really inform what you're making for your audience and how you're making it. But then it's fantastic for collaborating as well and really getting everyone's voice woven together and seeing how what you make affects a person and like what's their life before they meet your product and then during and potentially after too. So there you go. Drawing user journey maps is a workshop I recommend honestly for everybody, but especially if you're curious about learning some aspects of collaborating with user experience design. Uh, another one that I really recommend checking out is customizing your next creative challenge. That's something that I plan on putting myself through again, because it's really a repeatable technique to say you have a project coming up. And if you're going to sort of uh, frame it as uh, like a time framed uh, production that maybe has a purpose of leveling up or fun or a product or some combination of all those three, there's a, there's a workbook that, that comes with this class, customizing your next creative challenge that can help you, um, well, think that through and create a recipe that works good for you. So if you're going to take on like NaNoWriMo is coming up or Art Sound Off is coming up and dialing that in, in a way that really fits you where you're at right now uh, is it, I mean, that's, that's your, that's your option. Uh, why not exercise that? Make the most out of your next creative challenge by customizing it. And yeah, that's what I'll share today. Rob Stenzinger.com slash store dot HTML. And, uh, and the last thing we hope you'll check out is the Lean Into Art Discord. And we've been interacting with people on the Discord stream or the Discord server while we've been streaming this episode. Um, so you can join them there. And the invite link is in the show notes for this episode and every episode. Um, it's a forum. There are public channels for you to interact with us, but then there's also special channels for people who support us on patreon.com slash lean into art. And thanks to everybody who's been hanging out there. It's been wonderful to interact with you and talk with you in between episodes. That's the fun of it, is that the conversation isn't attached to a single video on a YouTube stream. The conversation can be time shifted and we can interact, you know, on a variety of topics, not just about the ones that are explored on specific episodes of Lean Into Art. So, okay. You want to check in on our two-minute practice? Remind everybody what our two-minute practice is, Rob? Yeah, that sounds really good. The, the two-minute practice, it's like the, the mini show within the show, and it's, it's to highlight that we can, we can try and, and explore uh, things that maybe have a flavor of a creative challenge, but it, you know, that if, we, if we do that in small ways, just take, set a timer for two minutes, um, it, it frees us up where we don't have to do something for a month long that eats many hours or what have you, or an unpredictable amount of time. It's just two minutes. So we can try all kinds of things there. And, and what we're trying this session, right? We're doing these every two weeks now is, um, it's a filling a page with uh, doodle characters. And, you know, the idea was we'd be, you would add a character or few, what have you in whatever works for you in two minutes at a time and see what comes out of that as you fill up a page. That's it. That, that's the long and short of it. There's nothing else. Just do that and then convene with us next week to talk about what you experienced when you did it. Um, so very simple and hopefully uh, emotionally and um, chronologically inexpensive. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, it's... Um... Those ex those emotionally expensive ones are are valuable too, but um, but we find that it maybe we're doing the practice less often. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that's not to say that this one is going to be emotionally inexpensive for everybody. That's the other thing that's interesting to find out is like so this one might be more challenging for some people than say other ones like the last one we did where we were doing color palettes. So um, all right, so we'll see everybody next week to talk about that. And if you want to subscribe to the microcast. Uh, you can go to leanatork.com slash two minute practice, number two minute practice. I uh, had it up on screen. You can find it in podcatchers everywhere. And that's where you can quickly catch up with what 
the practices are and how we encountered them. So I think did we do a podcast? We did a podcast. Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. We we. I mean, if we're if we're putting a box of uh, of of this podcast on the shelf, we'd probably say like you know contains you know fifty percent extra podcast. What have you? <laughs> Full of it, podcasts. It, it includes 400 page manual on how to consume podcasts. <laughs> and and tw- and I don't know how many three and a quarter inch floppies would co- would come with this. It'd probably be like like 30 or 40 floppies. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I more than that. I think you're 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 you got a wheelbarrow of floppies. I mean, you've got so many floppies uh, of value. So that's, that's something that, that's one to grow on. So. And, and Aaron is is uh, pointing us towards our next Patreon tier, where you get the Flopcast edition, where we send a dump truck <laughs> full of floppies to your house. All right, thanks everybody for hanging out with us and downloading, listening, and watching. We record the show uh, weekly on Thursdays at noon Eastern Time, eleven a.m. Central. We stream it live on a variety of platforms, and then collect it as a podcast at Patreon.com/slash Alinatort and Alinatort.com. Until next time, everybody, I have been Jersey Drozd of Lenatort.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I'm Rob Stenzinger of Lenatort.com and I'm Rob Stenzinger all over the place, like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at Leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user LeanIntoArt, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.